guys. So we have all of our joist pockets are cut. We've got our scarf joint is cut. All I have left to do to finish this tie beam off is cut this tenon out of here and cut the, uh, the brace mortise, which I think I'm going to do that one by hand because it's going to be hard to clamp the uh, chain mortiser on. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe not. Thinking wrong here. Yeah, I'm going to do this one by hand because this bottom's out of square and I don't like clamping the mortise around something out of square. It just does a terrible job. So we'll do that one by hand. But uh, so anyhow, uh, one of the very early videos I showed you guys that I didn't really explain anything. I was kind of trying to find my way and how to do it right and all that. But uh, anyhow... <clears throat> One of my very early videos, I think is like my third one on the channel, third one listed, uh, I cut a tie beam tenon and I kind of did it the hard way. So if you have a bandsaw mill set up at home, kind of nice to be able to uh, take advantage of that, as I am doing here. And just like anything else, we are concerned with the reference face and the adjacent face. Beautiful. Now I don't mind having it a little bit above the line because that'll give me room to make adjustments if I need to. So anyhow, I'm gonna do most of the, uh, the hard part right here in the sawmill. On that early video I did, I kind of did it the hard way. Not, not even really the hardest way. I mean, it was I used power saws and stuff, but uh, this just works nice. But thing to keep in mind when you set this on your sawmill, if you have a sawmill and that's what you're doing, make sure your uh, your adjacent face, depending on which way your tenon's going. But since this is a horizontal framing member, my reference face is pointing up, not down. And then again, we said that is because we want the floorboards to meet up, everything to do what they're supposed to do. So if that's my reference face, I'm laying this down on the adjacent face to the reference face, the side that my arris is where the two points meet. This way I know I'm cutting square to the reference face. So that's kind of important. I mean, you're going to follow those principles through the entire frame. So we're going to fire the sawmill up. I'm going to cut these. It's takes very little time to do it this way and uh, you guys can see what we got. Alright. That's the easy way. All right, so you can see what we have there. Kind of, uh, I cut just about to the line on that side. When you come around here to this side, it's going to be shy. It's going to be shy because we have a housing here. All right, so. We'll explain that when we put this together. When I cut the wall post, we'll explain that a little better. Okay, so we roughed this out on the sawmill, and now I've just got to clean it up, pare it down to my line. Um, use this little block plane here. I only have to take about a sixteenth of an inch off. A 
I like about a black plane is it goes across that like a cross grain really well. It does a nice job. You know. What I need to get is a rabbiting plane, one that'll uh one that I can get tight into there. Those I gotta finish off with a chisel. And you can see there, I still get a healthy amount of line right there. It's only about a sixteenth. But we gotta get that cleared to there. Oh, going the other way on the knot. <laughs> Clean this corner up. Now these knots I'm not too concerned with. I mean, that's really pretty small surface area. Normally, I mean, if you can get away with it, you'd like that clear on the tenon, but, you know, unfortunately, you're going to find situations where you kind of have to deal with what you have and try to make it work. saw blade chatter there. Well you can see right there I did get there with my uh, with my planer with my block plane. This here I think I'm already lower there. There. One side, take a straight edge, just check it, make sure you got it good and straight. Got about a, I think here, middle's probably, middle's a tiny bit higher, but not enough to say so or to really fuss with too much. I mean, we could take it down a little bit, but it's really, not at a point where it's going to bother anything. And there we go. We can live with that. Um, also, when you're when you're done, it's pretty square there. Not bad. Now, when you're flipping these over, I'm not worrying about marking these beams up a little bit. It doesn't bother me for what I'm using it for. I mean, this is going to be my shop. So if I get a few dimples from the PV, I'm not too concerned about it. But keep in mind, if you're trying to do finished beams nice, smooth, and you're trying to get the look, you know, the, the aesthetics perfect, you're going to want to do something other than a PV. You can use a, uh, oh, I've taken and used a, uh, used a strap with a 10 foot 4x4 four four to roll the logs and roll these over. That works really well. Um, I said, usually I'm not too terribly concerned about it. Tell you what, a pallet jack is beautiful for doing this kind of work. Hey, remember what I said about only cutting your line. Only cut what you can see. That's how you keep it accurate.
I really need to invest in a good rip saw. Because trying to do this like this with a crosscut saw is a bit of a pain. I always find it helps too if you put a little wedge in there, keep your saw from pinching. Makes it a lot easier to cut that off. You hear that guys? I think it just laughed at me. So we're not quite there yet. Now you're going to be tempted when you do this to take your chisel. You're going to be tempted to take your chisel and drive that in there. Try to avoid doing that, you know. Because all you're going to do is mark up that end and you're going to see it every time you walk in the building. That mark will be there from when you got impatient. It's like bringing a knife to a gunfight with this thing. Oh, we're so close. Yeah, I mean, we are close. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now, I'm going to do the final check on this when I go to put this joint together. But I just shave it down to the lines now. And then uh, when I go to slide this bent together or put the wall post into this, that's so I'll do my test fit. And I, if I have to do any adjustments, I'll do it there. Um, so, another thing. I can point out to you guys is relish and for the uh, Q&A video I will get you I will get you the uh, rules of thumb for the relish that you need to make this a strong joint so when I go to peg this my holes are going to be two and a half inches up two and a half inches out going to go right in the center two and a half inches out two and a half inches down two and a half inches out. The reason it gets done that way, for one, that's going to leave me probably about seven and a half inches of relish there, maybe a little bit more. A little bit less there, a little bit less there, but it's still going to leave me. And what the relish is, it's that area past the pegs that has to hold together to keep the pegs from pulling out of there. So say I were to peg this back here. Well, you don't have an awful lot of relish left that's going to keep that joint from sliding apart. So what, what that could possibly do, remember these, these tie beams, they're going to be under a tension load. That means, let's say the wall post is coming that way, and at the top plate of the wall post, you're going to have rafters against there. And the rafters are going to want to push out against that top plate. That's going to push out against the wall post. The wall posts, in turn, are going to push out on this joint here against the relish. So if I peg this way back here and I don't have enough relish, that has the possibility that that thing could pop that, that peg right out through there because being the difference in the species of wood, this being white pine versus white ash, what my pegs are, this white pine is going to give out long before those white ash pegs do. So, and that's one reason I'm doing three pegs. Um, it's one reason I'm doing three pegs with it. For one, it gives me more strength. And the other thing, it's just three spots where it has to try to rip against that relish. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're designing your joints. And the reason that we're going two and a half inches up and two and a half inches out we're going by the thickness of that tenon right there. That's, that's where your layout is for that. So when you're done cleaning this up, you take and you chamfer the edges of this right here. Because when you're putting the bent together, 
when you go to put that bent together, that's gonna that's gonna help you line it up and slide it in a lot easier. And when you don't do this, it makes it very hard to put it together. You hit all four sides. Now another thing you can do, you can take your chisel, you can take your chisel and just pair across that grain. You know what I mean? You can just you can just do that with it, you do the same thing. So, anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed that one.